I have read hundreds of books on money management and investing and building wealth and after thousands of hours of reading these books, I have narrowed down my top 25 books that I think you should read if you want to build your wealth and achieve financial success and I'm going to go over those books in this video. There are five categories of books that I'm going to discuss. I'm going to talk about five books that talk about building your personal wealth. I'm going to talk about five books on personal development. I'm going to talk about five books about how to earn more money particularly with starting your own business, creating your own income. I'm going to talk about five books on how to scale your business. And then I'm going to talk about five of my favorite biographies that I recommend you read. So let me start by talking here with Building Your Personal Wealth. The first book about building a personal wealth is none other than Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This was the first book that I ever read cover to cover voluntarily and I'm pretty sure this is the first book that I ever read cover to cover in my life because English is my second language. I hated reading. I was really bad in my English class and I never read. But as soon as I picked up this book, I couldn't put it down. I read this book on a plane ride from America to India when I was going to visit my family and this was the first time I ever got exposure to money and personal investing and wealth and passive income and real estate investing. This book, if you have not dove into how do you start building wealth, you have to start with this book because the way that Robert Kiyosaki explains it is so easy for anybody to understand and I cannot recommend this book enough for you to start your personal finance and wealth journey. Number two, after you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, you have to read Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. This book takes a completely different spin on money, but it will help you understand money from two completely different angles. Dave Ramsey has some great methods on how you can start paying down your debt, how you can start building your wealth with what he calls baby steps, and he lays it down for you step by step by step with exact things that you need to do right now. That way you can build your wealth. Robert Kiyosaki and Dave Ramsey were the two people that really ignited and started my financial education journey, so I cannot recommend these two people enough. Number three is The Creature from Jekyll Island. This book is completely different than the others that I just mentioned because this book talks about more on money theory. This book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, talks about the Federal Reserve Bank and what our money is and how the Fed operates and what it does. This will help you understand the theory behind money and our economic system, which will really help drive why you need to invest. Sure, you need to invest to build your wealth, but to really understand the why of why it's important in our economic system, you have to read The Creature from Jekyll Island. Number four is Investing in Real Estate by Gary Eldred. This one was hard to pick because there are so many good real estate investing books out there, but I picked this one because this book covers everything you need to know to get started as a real estate investor. It covers the numbers, it covers what is real estate investing, it talks about different types of real estate investing and how to get started as a real estate investor. So if you want to invest in real estate and you want a good kind of overall coverage on real estate investing, Investing in Real Estate by Gary Eldred helps break it all down. Number five for my stock market investors is One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. If you want to know how do you find a good company to invest in, what numbers you should be looking at when you're reading financial statements, and how do you start analyzing a company that way you can find a good company versus a bad company, One Up on Wall Street breaks it down in an easy to read format. So if you want to learn how to invest your money in the stock market, One Up on Wall Street. Now shifting gears from personal wealth to personal development is number six, how to win friends and influence people. I recommend everybody read this book. I even had everybody in my team read this book because this book goes over not just how to make friends, but how to really succeed in your communications with really anybody. Because it talks about how you should talk, the way you can say things, how do you encourage somebody, how do you get somebody to like you, how do you get somebody to do things for you, not in a kind of manipulative way, but really understanding people's intentions and learning how to speak and communicate in a very effective manner. Number seven is, fittingly, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This is a book on how to be more efficient and effective in your time. There are seven different habits that this book goes over on things that you can do. That way you can be more efficient and get more things done. Like the one step that I remember really stuck with me was start with the end in mind. Where if you want to achieve this goal, if you want to fly in a private jet, are you doing the things that are going to help you actually achieve that? Now that might seem like common sense, but this book really breaks it down into a way that where you start questioning, are you doing the right things in your life that will allow you to be the most efficient and effective 
in your life and with the time that you have. Now, if you're like me and you're kind of overwhelmed with the idea of physically reading all these books, you don't have to physically read the book. I listen to the books. I use Audible. You can use whatever platform that you want. For me, it's a lot easier to listen to books because there's a lot of value in books. I didn't grow up with a whole bunch of mentors and people teaching me financial education and how to start a business and investing. So I got this information from books. I also get some information from YouTube and podcasts, but books have been such a wealth of knowledge for me. So I love reading books, but I'm not a good reader, so I listen to books. Number eight, this one might seem a little bit different, but men are from Mars, women are from Venus. This is a book that focuses on relationships. How do you have a good relationship? Because essentially, it talks about how men and women have different languages. Now, this relationship could be your spouse. It could also be people that you work with. So it's a really good book that talks about how men and women speak differently. And even if you think you know everything, I recommend you read the book. Because when you think you know everything, you probably don't know as much as you think you know. So if you want to learn about how do you communicate with the other gender, and how do you actually be more efficient and effective with that, especially if you are in a relationship, if you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, or a wife, I highly recommend you read this book even if you think everything is going great. Number nine is Never Finished by David Goggins. I just finished this book and man, I really like this book because it really lit a fire under me and I haven't felt that way in a long time. I used to love listening to motivational CDs back when I was getting started on my entrepreneurial journey. I used to listen to a guy called Eric Thomas E.T. I listened to a CD called The Blueprint to Success so many times that I literally memorized all the words in the CD. Now, this book, Never Finished by David Goggins, really got me excited again. The way that he speaks, the personal stories that he tells, and just kind of the crazy things that he has gone through, it will really inspire you and make you want to think bigger and really stop making excuses for yourself. So if you feel like you're stuck, you're not achieving and seeing the success that you want in life, read this book and I can guarantee you it is going to light a fire under you. Number 10 is the 48 Laws of Power. This book is very controversial because it really teaches you how can you be more manipulative? How can you get people to do things for you? How to win friends and influence people is kind of the nice way and the thing that everybody should read. 48 Laws of Power now is really how do you succeed with the way that you do things? How do you understand how to speak with people? What type of things should you say, not say? It's a really, really, really powerful book. It's gotten a lot of heat but I would highly recommend anybody, especially if you want to be in the business space or succeed in the corporate world, read The 48 Laws of Power. Now shifting to category three, how do you earn more money by starting a business? Book number 11 is That Will Never Work. This is a book that tells the story of Netflix, where the founders of Netflix were essentially told time and time again that their idea would never work, to talk about their failures, to talk about how they built the Netflix company from nothing just because they wanted to solve a simple problem of something like late fees that you had to pay when you went to Blockbuster back in the day. Now Netflix is obviously a dominating force on the internet, but how did they start? How does a random guy just come up with this idea and actually build it when they don't have all that much to go out and do it? Number 12 is the Billion Dollar Brand Club. And the reason why I love this book is because I'm a marketer and I love creative marketing that companies do, especially startup companies, to get the word out there without having to spend a ton of money. So this book tells about companies like Warby Parker and the Dollar Shave Club and how they disrupted their industries, did something that nobody thought was possible. They completely shook up the whole industry and then we're able to make a lot of money doing it. And many of these companies started with not that many resources, and they share those stories of how these companies started and were able to completely disrupt industries that had long established companies that had the big market share. Number 13 is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. This is a fun book. He talks about how Phil Knight had this idea for Nike to build this shoe company, but before he had this idea to build a shoe company, he was doing all these other things. Then he went to selling shoes out of the back of the trunk of his car and then continued continued to build the company to a million dollar company but was still living like he was poor and then continued to build Nike into what it is today. And he shares the story, the innovative ideas that he had to build Nike and it's a very inspirational story because you see how this guy, Phil Knight, really took Nike from nothing into a massive company. Number 14 is Made in America by Sam Walton where Sam Walton talks about how he built Walmart. This is an inspirational book because you hear the story of how this guy started building these small little convenience stores and then he wanted to make them better. And he was so laser focused on just doing one thing, 
providing a better service and value to its customers, that it was able to open more stores, that it was able to increase the customer value in each store, meaning make more money out of each store, and then continue to grow this brand and build Walmart to what it is today, and how laser-focused he was, because he talks about in this book how he didn't invest in anything. He didn't have stock market investments or real estate investments. He only had Walmart investments because he was so focused on doing just one thing, and building his company. And he wrote this book not long before he passed away because he said in this book that this was a memoir essentially that he wants his grandkids and great grandkids to read. That way they don't screw his company up. Number 15 is called the Airbnb story. I travel a lot, so I spend a lot of time in Airbnb. So I decided to read this book and it's super interesting because you hear about how three guys had this idea to rent out their apartment. And they wanted to do this Airbnb thing because they were tired of hotels. They wanted to make something more fun, something where people could feel more connected. And to hear that story of how they went from that to really building the entire Airbnb company is so inspirational because you can see, again, how these guys leveraged the power of the internet to start from nothing to build this massive corporation and you hear the journey of how they did it. Now let's shift from starting your business and starting to make some money and coming up with a business idea to actually scaling your business to earning a whole lot more money with business number 16, which is built to sell. If you are an entrepreneur, you have to read this book. Built to Sell talks about how do you actually build a real business, meaning a business that you can sell. It doesn't mean you have to sell your business, but how do you build a business where you can take yourself out of the business, that way you have the potential to potentially sell the business. Most of the time when you're an entrepreneur, you get started, you are the business, or you are a vital component of the business that the business cannot run without you, but if that's what you're doing, you don't actually have a real business. And this book talks about how you can shift from this side hustle that you're running to a real business that can run without you actually being in the business. 17 is Blue Ocean Strategy and I love this book because it really encompasses that minority mindset message where it's how do you think different than everybody else and what this book focuses on is how you can find a blue ocean of opportunity because what most people are trying to do is most businesses are trying to compete against each other to do the same thing. And what this book talks about is how you can stop competing with other companies that we have no competitors and do something completely different and create what the book calls a blue ocean and now build a whole new world of opportunity that didn't exist before. 18 is Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea. And I really related to this book because the book talks about this guy who wanted to be an entrepreneur. His parents are immigrants and they didn't want him to be an entrepreneur. They wanted him to go down a safe and stable route like being a doctor. So I really related with the whole kind of backstory behind it but then he talks about how he built a company sold it and made millions of dollars but then he didn't feel fulfilled because now he had millions of dollars but they didn't have a purpose in his life so then he went on and he went on to work with a company called Zappos to build it into a billion dollar company but the thing that he talks about that really made him happy along the process was doing something with company culture and this book really talks about how they formulated and created company culture and how it changed the way that the company worked. And as soon as I read this book, that was when we really started creating our core values here at the Minority Mindset Companies. We started defining our company culture. So if you have a business, I definitely recommend you read this book, Delivering Happiness. 19 is Purple Cow by Seth Godin. And again, I love marketing. This book is all about if you were to see a field of cows while you were driving and you saw one purple cow which cow would you remember? You can remember the cow that sticks out. So what it talks about now is how you can kind of create that purple cow mentality in your business. How can you make what you do stand out so people remember what you do instead of all the other vanilla competition? What can you do that's different so people remember you? Number 20 is Straight From The Gut by Jack Welch. Jack Welch was the previous CEO of General Electric GE and he talks about the journey that he went through to one, become the CEO and then actually lead and manage the company to become the massive powerhouse that GE is. And he talks about how he managed employees, why he fired employees and how he built systems, very difficult systems that allow GE to excel in so many different parts and how they created a culture of winning not losing. This book will make some people feel very uncomfortable, but if you are a manager or if you're leading a business or you're a business owner, you have to read this book to understand how you can build a winning business because businesses need to win. You are competing. If you're playing business to lose, well, then you don't have to read this book. But if you really want to learn how to win and read the uncomfortable truths of the things that he had to do, 
you should read his book. This brings me to the last category of books, which are biographies, which are probably some of my favorite types of books to read because you just hear the story of how somebody went from wherever they were in the beginning part of their life to whatever they achieved. And there are such interesting stories and you learn so much that you might never thought that you were going to learn about a book. Like I've learned about mental health from these books. I've learned about relationships from these books. I've learned about nutrition from these books. There are so many little tangents that you will learn from these books because you're going to hear from people's life experiences. Which brings me to book number 21, Call Me Ted by Ted Turner, the founder of CNN. Now, I don't care if you watch CNN or not. I don't really like watching TV news. Actually, I hate watching TV news. But this book, Call Me Ted by Ted Turner, where he talks about how he went from working in swamps to put up billboard signs to then building the CNN company and how he built that his journey is amazing. One, it is super funny. This book was hilarious, but super crazy. You hear the crazy stories that Ted Turner had to go through. I mean, this guy was, this is one of those guys that you feel like you have to shake his hand because when you hear his story and the things that he went through, he holds nothing back in this book. He holds absolutely nothing back and it is one of those things where it is so entertaining and so educational that you have to read Call Me Ted. Number two is Elon Musk. Now everybody knows Elon Musk because of what you hear on the news, what you see with Twitter, what you see with Tesla, but if you really want to get kind of a behind the scenes of the way Elon Musk thinks, you got to read his book. And when you read Elon Musk, the book that covers Elon Musk's life, it is really inspirational because you see the different way that he thought, the way that he thinks, the things that he does, and the way that he built his companies, it is very crazy. And you start to see that he does think very differently and it'll make you want to think even bigger. Number 23 is Onward by Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz is the guy that built Starbucks into what it is. And I'm not a huge Starbucks spender. Yeah, I go to Starbucks every once in a while. My wife likes Starbucks, but I'm not a huge spender at Starbucks but I know that Starbucks has a great presence, so I wanted to read it. But I was super impressed by his book and all the things that he went through, his story, and the way that he built Starbucks. Because people, either some people hate Starbucks or they love Starbucks, but when you read this book, you will really appreciate the art behind Starbucks. And you will understand much more about why Starbucks does the things that it does. And you'll hear his journey about traveling the world, learning and applying his knowledge into his business. So if you don't know what you want to do in life, if you're not really sure how to make money, if you're not really sure if you're passionate about something, read this book. It'll be very inspirational. Number 24 is Steve Jobs. And I know there's a lot of documentaries on Steve Jobs out there, but these documentaries don't do justice. You have to read his book. It's a long book, but this book really walks you through the life of Steve Jobs. You see the way he thinks at a young age. You see the different things that he does. You see the different things that he sees and how he was able to then create this different world into then the Apple company. And then how he got fired from the Apple company. And then how he came back to the Apple company and then took Apple to even more heights and how he thinks very different. And because he thinks different, he was able to build this massive corporation, build a lot of wealth for himself. But you hear the crazy way that he thinks and you learn more about his life story. So if you use Apple products or if you like Apple, or even if you don't like Apple products, but you wanna see how to use art and science and technology together, this book, Steve Jobs, does an amazing job to walk you through the way that he thinks. And last but not least, number 25, Binding My Virginity by Richard Branson. And I love his books because one, he's a great marketer and obviously he's built a huge brand around the Virgin Brands, but also because he's crazy. I love that about him. I've always really liked Richard Branson and the way he, did, he thinks because he never really cares what you think. He does things on his terms the way that he wants and I always really respected that about him. And you just hear the crazy marketing stories that he does where he's jumped off buildings, where he's done crazy things to get free publicity for himself and his companies and you hear the thinking behind it. And you hear the story of how he grew up from nothing to build a massive multi-billion dollar corporation. Super inspirational book. So if you want to learn more about how do you actually be different, read Richard Branson's books. Finding My Virginity is a great book to start with. And that's 25 books that if you read these 25 books, I can guarantee you're going to change the way that you look at money, wealth, success, and life. Let me know if I missed a book down in the comments. And as a little bit of a bonus, we also have a free ebook that you can read on how to start generating passive income and building wealth through your investments from Market Insiders. This book is completely free. So if you want to download a free ebook on how to start generating passive income and start investing, I got the link for you down in the description below. Now, when you start generating this cash flow from the stock market, you can choose if you want to automatically reinvest it to buy you more cash flow, or if you want to start using that money to start living your life. So you have a lot of flexibility with the stock market. So let me 
start by talking about the difference between dividend stocks and dividend ETFs, and then we go over some examples before we go even deeper. All the examples that I'm 